hello amazing viewers it's nurse glory and her family again so this video you're watching is us in a private beach okay we are on our way to the private beach actually we never ever um thought about coming to this place as you can see we are not well dressed we only wore our clothes to go to the beach like the public beach and then my husband is like, okay, there's a private beach here according to the Google map. And he's like, okay, let's try or check out this um, private beach. And then when we entered it, it was so luxury. It was really, really, really luxury. And um, <laughs> what to do? So we just have to enjoy the moment, okay? So I couldn't make live stream. So I decided to take videos to share with you guys. So you all should enjoy this video. As you are enjoying this video, do not forget to share so that other people can enjoy this video as well. You know, a lot of you are thanking me for bringing them to Dubai. You don't have to fly to Dubai. You can actually see Dubai through my lens. Okay. Thank you so much for doing that. So guys, as you're watching this video, I'm going to be sharing a very short story with you. <laughs> Some of you said you love when I share story. Okay, so sit down, grab your popcorn, and listen to my story. This stage, you see me and Darko. We did not just get here overnight. Guys, it took so much strength, energy, time, money, agreement, understanding for us to get to here. It did not just happen, guys. And we thank God for his grace and for giving us the strength to make it up to this moment. Let me tell people a short story, how I met my husband. You all already know, but I know new people will be watching this story. You can check my previous stories to, to hear how I met my husband. So when I met this man in the Philippines where I was studying, he was very, very nice, kind, and generous, okay? He was there for me when I needed help. Guys, I am not an opportunist. My parents did not train me up that way. Okay? I was just a desperate child who has no mother or father in the Philippines. Who has nobody? You understand? Just trying to help myself to get out of school, to graduate. Especially in a country whereby there is no job. I don't have that mentality of saying this person owe me something, that person owe me something. No. But I thank God that at the end of the day, I finally met somebody who said he wants to spend his life with me. And that person who wants to spend his life with me doesn't want to watch me suffer while he can actually help. Know the difference. Some people will be like, oh, you want what I want. You, you want what I have. You want what I have. Guys, they are two different things. Some people want what you have, but they don't want you. Why other people want you and that is where you should realize if you can help. So guys, in my situation, I saw this man. I love him. And he saw that I love him. He saw that I was different. And then he decided to help. So everything was like a magic. Okay. So when this man paid my tuition fee, guys, he actually came to school to beg them to allow me to write exam. That when he goes back to Kuwait, where he was working, he's going to send the remaining school fees money. So... I thought he was joking, but he was not joking. He actually paid my school fees. I love education. Guys, I am this child that my father said he doesn't um, want to send the female child to school because they will end up in a, another man's kitchen. So my mother made this possible, guys. All thanks to my mother who sent me to the Philippines. God bless her. So, because of that, I took my education so serious that I just want to graduate by all means. I just want to get that degree by all means. I was so, so focused. Do you understand? Sometimes when I'm telling my friends the kind of life I want for myself in future, they'll be laughing at me. No, glory, please stop dreaming. Stop dreaming. But I wasn't dreaming. At some point, I stopped telling them my dreams, my plans, because they are mocking at me. They are laughing at me, you know? But only me understand where I want to get to. Do you understand? So, after this man succeeded in paying my school fees, eh, I am debt free. Guys, he thought I was going to run away from him. He thought I'm going to block him. But guys, I was not brought up like that. Honestly speaking, I actually loved this guy. 
So I stick with him. I did so many sacrifices because he also sacrificed for me. Do you understand? So when I came to Kuwait where he was living and working to live with him as his wife because I came on spousal visa, it was difficult to get me Kuwait visa because I'm a Nigerian passport holder. But with his connection with um, the locals in Kuwait, guys, he got me this visa. So I don't have to go to Nigeria and come to Kuwait. So I came from Philippines to Kuwait, although I was asked so many questions at the airport. So finally, I came to Kuwait. I started looking for a job, which I couldn't get a job. Do you understand? Okay, there was this company I found, this hospital. They said um, my husband have to pay for my sponsorship visa. Why would they say my husband should pay my sponsorship visa when they are the ones that are supposed to transfer my visa from family visa to work visa? Imagine. And do you know how much they want to pay me? Peanut. But you know why? I really wanted to work. I want to accept that peanut because I don't just want to depend on my husband. Of course, you should depend on your husband because he's your husband. But guys, I have family back home who depend on me and they are not working. They are not working. And I am not this type of a person that is always asking somebody for money. If I need money for this, I will ask my husband. If I need money for that, I will ask my husband. Imagine. So if my husband is going to work, he used to give me money to buy um, groceries around the house. So I will be saving some money. <laughs> and those money I'm saving, I used to send it to my family. Because one Kuwaiti dinner is equals to 1,000 Naira. So imagine if I save like 20 Kuwaiti dinner, it is like 20,000 or 25,000 Naira according to exchange rate or whatever. So it's, it's very huge. So as time goes on, this company I applied for job didn't work. Okay. So my husband now said, um, I should just stay at home and his salary will take care of us. Guys, I'm not okay with that. I'm a Nigerian woman. No? I love to work hard and guys remember i told you before the kind of life i want for myself nobody can give it to me only me can give it to myself by the special grace of god with god helping me you know they said help heaven help those who help themselves right so god is actually ready to help me he just wants me to make the move so that he can give me strength he can clear obstacles for me actually obstacles came but he made me to overcome them so guys I was still disturbing my husband that I need something to do. I need something to do. <laughs> and he now said, okay, since I'm at home, let me take up English course called TEFL. So I took up the course for three months and then I got a certificate. So with that certificate, I was able to be applying for teaching jobs in Kuwait. I found a teaching job whereby they are supposed to pay me some good amount of money. But there's no um, rent, no um, transportation, no accommodation. My goodness, my husband was not okay with it. He said, what if I was not married? How am I going to pay my rent? This money is too small. But me, I was like, honey, let's just accept this money like that. At least it's still better than me sitting down at home doing nothing because all I do is when he goes to work, I just turn on the television and watch, eat, um, shit, and uh, sleep. That is what I do until he returns from work. He now said, okay, okay, that he can see in my eyes that I really want to work. And when I started working, these people I'm working with started misbehaving. They don't want to pay me. After paying me one month, the second month, they started misbehaving. They don't want to transfer my family visa to um, their company visa. Anytime Minister of Education comes, they'll be asking me to run, run. And my husband doesn't like that. He said, if these people catch me, that he is in trouble because I, I am under my husband's visa. So, guys, my husband now said, I should stop working. That he doesn't like the way they are treating me. Because this is how some of them treat African passport holders. So, these people refused to pay me the second salary. My husband now called them and said, Do you want problem? Do you want me to call the Ministry of Education to you? Close down your school. Or you pay my wife. Mm, my friends, these people paid me with immediate effect. I went home. I started looking for another job. I found another job whereby they were going to pay 20 is it 20 dirham in a day or 15 dirham? I don't know. Um, Kuwaiti dinner. It's Kuwaiti dinner, guys. We are still in Kuwait, okay? Don't be confused. My husband said this money is too small. Why am I stressing myself? 
I said, honey, you don't understand. It's still better than sleeping at home. Guys, then I don't have a baby. I was just new in Kuwait. I don't have anybody. I don't have any friends. So you can imagine the boredom. My husband now said, okay. One thing I like about my husband is very, very supportive. As long as I open my mouth and tell him what I want, he will help me. So guys, I started working you know, with these people's agreement. These people self refused to transfer my visa to their company visa. They said after month ending, okay. After my first day of teaching them, they said we are going to close school so so time. Do you know that I even stayed longer than the time? Hmm. Okay, pay me the fifteen dirham you say you are going to pay me. They are telling me they will pay me month um, at the end of the month. I said, but that was not the agreement. You guys told me that you will pay me at the end of the month. Why are you not at the end of the day? Why are you not paying me again? They said that is how they do for other people. Huh? My husband now called them. You people should pay my wife now, else I'm going to. They were like, but this is how we pay others. He said, listen to me. I am Serbian, okay? And I work with so, 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 and so, so, so company. And you know, I have worked with the sheikh of this country. There. He was calling names, giving them names. If you don't want Ministry of Education to come to your school tomorrow, you pay my wife her money because she earned it. And guys, these people brought out the money and paid me. So one woman said, Glory, you have a good husband. Hold him tight. So many African people here are suffering because they are not paying them and they don't have anybody to speak for them. You are blessed to have somebody who speaks for you. Hmm. Guys, now my question is, if I am not married to this, my husband, does it mean this is how they will be cheating on us? Hey, Tineke Kuni Hojo. My husband now said, please, stop working. Stop working. You are stressing yourself. You are stressing. So, guys, I now listen to him and I stopped working. Okay? But trust me now. Ah. I know there's still one place. <laughs> I have a YouTube channel that I opened in the Philippines that I abandoned. <laughs> so I took this channel very, very seriously. So I started sharing my story, how I left Nigeria to come and study nursing in the Philippines. I was sharing stories of how I met my husband, what I went through. Because guys, I suffered in the Philippines, but thank God for not um, giving up. So all these stories that I shared on my YouTube channel actually brought subscribers to me and my channel started growing and I started making some money. <laughs> Initially, my husband was against it. He's like, oh, don't put your business out there. Social media is dangerous, this and that, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, I'm not going to put you. It's just me. You know, they don't know anything about me. It's only what I've gone through. And I said, okay. Like I said, this man is supporting. Hmm. The first paycheck I made, this man wanted to go crazy. He was very, very happy. Very, 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 very happy. And then we had a baby. I was using my baby to make video. I was, guys, it was not easy because I was a stay-at-home mom, working from home as well. I took YouTube very, very serious. And then when um, I delivered my son, I opened the Facebook page. So that Facebook page I opened, I posted a video of Duduke and the video went viral and then it started bringing people to me. So when I got over 10,000 followers and the watch hour that Facebook needed, the bad thing was that I'm, I was living in the Kuwait, in Kuwait, and Kuwait is not eligible for Facebook monetization. So I spoke to my husband about it, although he doesn't know anything about social media, but I sat him down and explained to him how much other content creators are making for social, from social media. So I told him, if we can move from this country to an eligible country, we can start any because we have a very good audience, organic audience that love us and love what we do. Initially, my husband is like, where do we get money? Migration is not easy. And which country is very good for us that is close by? We said Dubai. Hmm. Guys, that was how we started saving money. We saved money. And during this period, I wanted to travel to Dubai. Eh? Hey! Guys, there were so much trials and temptation. So many things happened. Hey! But we came out, we overcame it, Sha. Guys, that is what I'm saying. You see where we got to today? Eh? It did not just happen overnight. It took the grace of God. I will tell you guys what we went through when we came to Dubai. It was not easy. Forget that we are making videos, smiling on the video. Guys, we were going through a lot. We were going through a lot. But people will not understand. That is why I'm telling you people, don't let social media 
fool you. People are making mockery of us. You people don't have a car. You married Oyibo. They did not know that this Oyibo that I married, I married him for love. And together, we are building the kind of life we want together. That is the kind of Oyibo man I married. I did not marry him because I'm a gold digger. Or even though I'm a gold digger, it's not your business. Do you understand? The most important thing is that this man believed in me. Anything I say, he accepts. He's very much ready to support me. He likes my zeal. Sometimes she'll be like, what? Are you sure this is going to happen? I'll be like, trust me. And sometimes when I'm not getting it right, he comes in and manages and, you know. Guys, I love just that we work hand in hand. I will continue the story in my next video. But meanwhile, I want to tell you, what is that problem that you're going through that is making you think all hope is lost? God doesn't love you. <laughs> Guys, go and look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself you deserve this good life. Get it, my dear. Don't let anything kill your joy or stop you. If you see me before, eh? Hey! You won't even want to talk to me. Because, guys, I saw me. But thank God for the spirit of not giving up. You know, sometimes when I tell my husband the kind of person I want to be, he'll be laughing at me. <laughs> before, he used to laugh at me. But now, he's not laughing at me. I'm telling you the truth. Now he's not laughing at me. Now he's like, okay, let's do this. I trust you. When he says he trusts me, I'm like, okay, I'm game. Let's do this. You, you need somebody that trusts you, that believes in you, that doesn't get jealous about your achievements. Because your achievement is his achievement, is our achievement. Because without him agreeing, there will not be me coming here. There will not be me being in Dubai. Guys, did you see God in action? So this God that has remembered me and my family will certainly remember you. He will remember you too. You that left your country and moved to another country for greener pasture. God will remember you. Amen. Thank you.